Welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you transform this one to this one. Welcome, ladies and gentle peeps. I'm very happy to see you today joining me, well, while I process my images. So, my name is Philip, and you can find me at Twitter at Let's Image, and I'm gonna right, jump right into it. There are more images to process today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, or the first thing I did, was I'm gonna play a bit with the contrast, because contrast is very bad here. So let's increase the contrast, like so, but increase the brightness as well. I wanna get the most out of the flowers. All right, that doesn't look bad. And once we have done that, we're gonna go to our hue and saturation. I'm just going to increase the saturation a bit, just just like a so. Maybe like a little less, like a so, like a so. All right, good. So that takes care of the flowers, and our flowers are poppy, a little bit too bright, but we can take care of that later. So the next bit will be, we can take care of that sign now. We can take care of the sign later. Probably we'll start off at the wall. So I want to, you know, make the wall a bit more pop. It's quite boring, just a brick wall in the background. Let's give it a nice color. So the way to give the wall some color is actually quite simple. So we're going to create a new layer by hitting Command Shift and N. Oh yes, now we're doing that. Command Shift and N, hitting Enter quickly. Then we're going to choose our paint bucket tool just here. We're going to choose a nice color, something like red. Fill that layer and change the blending mode here from normal to soft light. So it's going to do that. There you go. So, obviously that's a bit too strong, so we're gonna go down with the opacity a little. Actually, we can do it the other way around. I'm just gonna double click on that, and I'm, I say I just want this layer to be visible where the underlying layer is darker. Right, so I'm gonna go a little bit like that, I guess. So, all right, that looks not bad. And we can still go down with the opacity a tiny bit, do something like this. Good. Now, Gonna create a layer mask. Gonna hit Command N to in. No, I won't. Do that. Don't do that. Command I to invert that layer mask. So now I have to use my brush tool, and wherever I brush, if that is black here, this layer mask, wherever I brush, the layer mask will appear. Probably should use an opacity of 100% and just brush that through. <laughs> So I'm going to do that very quickly now. Obviously, in my uh, sort of normal processing, I do take my time and I do take care to go along all the edges and this kind of stuff, but not today. So, all right, so that's that. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to make the whole thing like dark. I want to have the feeling that the darkness is creeping in from the sides and that this tiny little shop is the only light source in the image. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go quickly to curves and I'll just take brightness away. As simple as that. I'm gonna do it quite extreme. That is of course not necessary, but something like that. What I will do now is I will hit Command and I. So again, I'm gonna hide that stuff, and wherever I brush through with my brush now, opacity at 50%, I'm gonna make it dark. For instance, here corners, up here, up here. I want complete darkness actually anyway. Right. So. That's not bad. Okay, let's make it a bit darker on the top here. A lot more darker over there. All right, let's get these corners darkened up a bit, and here as well. Actually, might as well get that all dark. Okay. To something like that. I do like that. That looks interesting. Okay. Okay, a bit more here and a bit more there. And a bit more on the edge here. Okay, I want it dark. All right. If it's too bright, you even can go back to your curves by just clicking the little symbol here and adjust what you have just done. And it'll adjust it for you. Okay. Good. So now I like the brightness. That's kind of neat. So what we need to do is we have to get our igloo sign back. So if you can, uh, if you look here in the moment, there is, shh, relax, brush. Uh, whoop, whoop. All right, so now you can't see the igloo sign. 
So there's a very simple fix for that. I'm going to go back to my original layer. I'm going to hit Command N J, which is going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to put it on top of my other layers. And I will reduce, not that, never mind that, I'm going to reduce contrast. I'm going to reduce brightness. Actually, I'm going to increase contrast a bit more again. A bit more of that as well. Just have to read it. All right, and once you can read it, the cool thing about it, something like that maybe, is and can now use a hue and saturation adjustment. And if I use this tiny thing here, the adjustments I'm going to make now here are just going to be applied to our uh, brightness uh, to our brightness change for our new fixed kind of layer. Okay. All right. So the way to do that now, I'm going to basically change the hue, and with that, if you look at the eclo flower sign, I'm going to change the color of the eclo flower. I don't worry at all about the rest. So I could make it red, could make it blue. I think in my original image I have it blue somehow. But I can't. Well, you might as well have it red. I mean, if the rest is red, why not having it red? Maybe something like that doesn't look bad. And we can actually crunch up the... Yeah, something like that. Cool. I do like that. So, and of course, what we have to do here, we have to say that this just has to be applied to this layer as well. So what I can do now, I can create a layer mask by hitting here, layer mask symbol, and then hit Command and I to invert that layer mask. So now we have our other image back. And if I now choose my brush by hitting B, and for instance an opacity of 50%, I can even make my brush a tiny bit smaller, maybe something like that, I can get back my Eagle Flowers sign. Now look at that. Beautiful. And I'm going to go over here again and again just to get the full power. So now obviously, you know, that color can be chosen after your liking. But uh, yeah, actually the red doesn't look bad in that background. All right, that's not bad. So now let's get the flowers and the lighting fixed in the foreground a bit and then add some grunge to the wall, I'd say. So how do we fix the flowers? Well, that's actually quite easy. So what we have to do is we're going to choose a hue and saturation adjustment and we go from a master down to green. So what I want is actually just a bit more green. I'm not, not greedy, a bit more green is enough. And uh, so what you do is you increase your hue and you increase your saturation. And what that does for you is it shows you what colors you have currently selected. So if I, uh, if I change that slider here, everything which is basically now changeable due to changing these sliders, it's going to go a bit crazy, all right? Something like that. So what I want is I want to select some green here. So let's get some green then. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. Just make sure that I don't have too much of the other stuff around. Maybe something like that. So and I'm going to go back with my hue and back with my saturation. And I'm going to adjust my hue to a green I like. So that's a bit too crazy. Let's actually increase that saturation. Maybe to something like this. Maybe even a bit more. We don't want it to go to blue. All right, maybe that doesn't look bad. <clears throat> Sorry. So that's not bad. That's actually quite, yeah, that's nice. That has a very subtle effect. I like it. So we're going to keep that. And we just have selected the green so we don't have to worry about any other part of the image changing. So what I would do next is probably I'll give the whole thing a bit of texture because I mean the image was, you know, like a quick shot. I didn't have time to so sort of build a tripod and kind of stuff. So let me show you what I do for that, guys. Let me zoom in. And you see the brick wall is not very. Well, let's say sharp is different. So what I will do is I will create a new layer. I'm going to hit the symbol down here and I'm going to press Command, Alt, Shift and E, which is basically a stamp copy. So everything you can see at this very moment on the screen will be copied as an image or as a layer basically onto that layer here, number two in my case. So I have like a new layer with everything on it and that's kind of brilliant because now I can go from blending mode normal to soft light down here and I go to Filter, and I go to Other, and High Pass. And you might wonder, what the hell am I doing? What I'm going to show you in a second. So I'm going to choose a very small radius, something like 1.8 pixels. Doesn't seem to be wrong. I'm going to hit OK, and you'll say, well, nothing has happened. So I will have that layer selected right here, and I'm going to hit Command and J 
to my liking, maybe a couple of times, something like this. And I'm going to select all these new layers, like so. I'm going to hit Command and G. And now watch what happens to the wall if I switch that thing off again. Oh my god, what a difference. I'm not sure if you guys are ready for that, but there you go, right? So and obviously it's not just the wall we have just adjusted. We have actually adjusted the whole of the image. Look how much more clear everything has become. Isn't that amazing? I love that filter. All right, and actually I do like the effect even in the plants. And I think in the original image I put it in the plants as well. So I'm going to leave it there. I mean, you know, stop me. And uh, I'm going to probably take it out a little bit on the foreground somewhere like here. So very simple, we're going to uh, create a layer mask, which is now, you know, counting for the whole group of images or, or layers I have created shortly before. And I'm going to hit B for my brush. And with like 50% opacity, I'm going to get rid of some of that stuff. I probably should hit X before. If a layer mask is white and you want to have any effect on the layer mask, you have to draw in black. If it's black, you have to use white. That doesn't make sense, so I'm going to use a little bit of that here, like 50%, just to, you know, take the crazy sharpness out of this kind of foreground. And I don't know if you have noticed, but if you make something too sharp, it can get noise. But in the case of the brick wall, I really don't, I mean, I couldn't care less about noise. I mean, it's a brick wall. It's noisy anyway. And in the plants, it's actually not bad. It could be worse. Maybe in the banks we have a bit of noise there, but, you know, why not? I mean... Who says an image can't be noise? I never said that. Uh, we have a bit of noise in here, but even that, with 100% uh, magnification as we have it now, I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, so let's go back with that. And the ground looks normal as well. Cool, I like that one. So the last thing I'm going to do here, and I'm actually not sure if I did that in the original image, is I'm going to re remove a little bit of, I believe they call it color cast or something like that. So what that means if, is, if you look at that image now, you're going to see a lot of red. Why is that? Because we added red, so that makes sense. But, um, I mean, even if you look at the plants, they look a bit reddish, so everything is a bit dominated with, well, red. So an easy way to get rid of this is to create a new layer and then choose your paint bucket tool here. Or you can just hit G, that helps as well. And if you hold Alt and choose a color, like here, you can fill the new layer with this particular color. And if you hit Command and I, it's going to give you the exact opposite of that color. Now, if you go from blending mode normal to soft light, you see what happens. The red has been massively reduced in the image. Uh, image. I mean, red, not so red. Red, not so red. Extremely red, not so red. So what you can do now, I don't want, the, uh, I don't want it to eliminate the red everywhere. So I just want to, you know, reduce it here and there. So I'm going to create... You may be surprised the layer mask. I'm going to hit B to get my brush. The layer mask should be black, I believe. So let's hit Command and I to invert that. And let's get, yeah, let's get our flowers back. Let's get our flowers nice and naturally colored without so much red in them. Here as well. And I got these plants. Exactly. And those guys as well. Yeah, beautiful. Here and there. And while we edit the peeps here, they don't have to be that crazy red around here. There you go. Okay. Bit here, bit there, bit here. Strawberries, might as well. Sunflowers, and a bit of green in here. Well, actually, not so much in here. Okay. So, there you go. Okay. Now we have a bit more natural colors when it comes to the flowers. Okay. So, let's zoom in a bit, like 90% a bit. That looks nice, I like it. It's very crisp, it's sharp enough, more than I need to. I think in the original image I played a bit more with the name, so I made the background of the name a bit darker or whatever. But that is basically how I edited this image of the eagle flowers somewhere being lost in the tunnels of London. And when I mean lost, lost, I mean really lost. I mean so lost, you wouldn't even believe it how lost I was. But there you go, I mean at least I found this tiny neat little shop. Alright guys, thanks for staying with me for the last 15 minutes. If you liked the video, please don't forget to hit the like button or, or end. Follow me on Facebook at well, Let's Image and on Twitter at, well, you guessed it, Let's Image. Well, that should be it for today. I thank you very much again and I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.